Hey guys. All right, so first of all, I want to say thank you for getting your hands on my 24 fabric materials pack. As you can see, there's 24 of these bad boys and basically all of these materials were scanned. And when I say scanned, I mean I literally used a scanner, a photocopy scanner uh, to scan in these materials and then I used Substance Designer to actually push them further. And they are all 100% tileable and at 4K resolution. Now, I would still recommend these materials for close to mid-range shots of whatever you're doing. I wouldn't recommend it for doing extreme, extreme close-ups because if you get really, really close, uh, some of the materials still get a little bit blurry, even though it's still at 4K resolution. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but you can still see quite a lot of detail from close to mid-range. And the reason why I put this together is because I actually wanted my own library of just high quality fabric materials and because I use Marvelous Design a lot and materials like this will really come in handy for any garments uh, that you're using and that's another thing I created these materials with the main idea of using them for clothing but of course uh, curtains and blankets and carpets are made out of fabric right so you're not just limited to clothing but clothing was what I was aiming for from the start but you can still use it with anything else and yeah there's 24 of them and the really awesome thing that i included is there's an actual substance painter material included for each fabric so for anyone who's using substance paint and, doing, and who is doing a pbr texturing you've got all of these materials at your disposal that you'll be able to use in the program and substance paint is where you actually push these materials further because you can combine some of these together you can adjust their properties and you can do a whole lot more in substance paint with these materials but if you're happy with how they look right now they are good to go so i'll go to the folder this is what you guys are going to see um only difference is uh, yeah well actually when you unzip this is what you guys are going to see in the zip folder and then the video tutorial was something else that was included in the package uh, but anyway this is what you guys see in the zip all of the fabrics now i still had a really hard time trying to identify each fabric over here i know some of them are fabric knits some of them are cotton and all of that so if there's anyone out there that actually got this pack and you can identify what each material is uh, feel free to message me uh, but in the meantime you'll see if you go into every folder there's a preview of every single material so you can get an idea of what material you'll actually be using all right so you'll see that for every single one of these folders you've got a preview of the material over here and all of these images were rendered in octane render by the way if you guys are interested and you'll see some of them are labeled like over here i've got fabric gene uh, because i actually scan my jeans to create that material and yeah it's a combination of some of my own scanned fabrics and then some of them are off cuts from an actual fabric uh, factory so again you can see you've got all these previews over here all right that's on on an actual suit that i created with marvelous designers so see we've got the base color the normal and the roughness and it's good to go and then over here is the substance paint material so if you want to get started immediately with substance painter i have a readme file over here that tells you basically gives you a breakdown of what you see in here as well and where to drag certain folders uh, but this substance painter material what you want to do is for me i installed my allegor rhythmic uh, folder in my c drive and basically you just want to go program files lego rhythmic substance painter resources shelf lego rhythmic materials and then you can see over here i just drag this exact folder in to this space so that means whenever i load substance painter all of my spsar files are going to load in the materials section of substance painter but again the readme file is here uh, because sometimes if they don't load in i give you a little workaround uh, telling you how to get those materials into Substance Painter so you can start using them. But anyway, that's just a quick intro. And now we'll just be talking a little bit more about the materials and going to Substance Painter to, sh to show you how you can combine them together to create new ones. And yeah, let's move on. All right, guys, so over here I've got Cinema 4D set up. I'm using a material ball. And if you guys are interested, if you actually want this material ball that I'm using, uh, just let me know. Send me a message. Um, I don't know, I didn't feel like it was really imp that important to include in the package because I thought the materials were more important than the material board. But if you want it, just let me know. Uh, and anyway, uh, you can see here I've got my Fabric Sense Cinema 4D and just showing you how I would set this up. And again, this is 
for a multitude of uh, these 3D programs. So you would drag in the diffuse, you'd load in a diffuse, so you'd go to your folder. So I would be using Fabric 19. I'd look at my preview to see what it looks like, load in my base color, then I would load in my roughness over here and my normal as well. Now, just some things to keep in mind. Uh, you'll see that the normal is actually really important. If I disable normal, we're going to lose all of that very micro surface detail. So having that normal included is really going to make a difference to get uh, this end result. Now, I also recommend playing around with, uh, in Cinema 40, it's called Power, or in other programs, just try and look for an intensity slider. Like I said, Cinema 40 is my program of choice when I'm using this stuff, uh, because this is where I render all my images with Octane. So playing around with the power slider can give you some varied results as well so you can see now that micro surface detail is quite subtle and we see some of the, the diffuse texture uh, sticking through there as well so we can play around with that or you can make it really intense uh, and get some more uh, different results you can see if i really pump up that normal now we can see a lot of surface detail on here so you can get some varied results just by playing around with the intensity of that normal slider. So keep that in mind. I'm going to bring that back to 1, the default. Now this roughness is also really important and it's important that you load all three maps. And let me show you why. So I'm going to disable normal and I'm going to disable my roughness. So without the roughness, you see this looks almost wet or it's extremely glossy. So that roughness is basically controlling uh, these glossy areas on the material. And it's literally just a white color that I rendered out of Substance Designer and that's controlling uh, the glossiness on this material uh, but also keep in mind that you can also play around with the specular let me bring back the normal you'll see that even if I, I decrease uh, if I make my specular color like maybe a black it's also going to change the property of this so it's, this is going to be a lot less uh, reflective it's almost becoming like a matte material now so playing around with the specular value is also uh, really important. Right, so if you're using this in other 3D programs. So that's just a quick uh, guide showing you how we would use these materials, how you can play around with the normal to get different results. And it's tileable and good to go. And let me zoom in here a little bit. You'll see we can, we can still go quite close and still see quite a lot of the detail, uh, which is great. But this, this micro surface detail really, really makes a difference uh, with, with cloth and fabrics because uh, it kind of gets rid of the digital uh, look of fabrics because, again, these are all real-world scan materials. So they contain all of the micro imperfections that we'd see on, on an actual real fabric. So it kind of sells uh, that fabric material by having that surface imperfections you'll see even from quite a distance you see how it breaks up the surface of that material right it doesn't just look like some flat uh, plain texture it's got this imperfection and um, detail on it which I think is really nice all right so that is that part for loading the materials and now let's go to substance painter okay quickly so I'm here in Substance Painter and just showing you what you can do before I actually get to the proper uh, video of the Substance Painter workspace. Uh, what you can actually do in here is, I've got my fabrics here, I can literally, if I wanted to, I could drag a fabric on top here and I could create a black mask. Now I can choose where I would want this material to be. So again, we can combine these materials together. So maybe let's say I wanted this white area to be over here. Now maybe it's too white, so I can actually adjust the intensity or color of this. I would create a fill layer, and with the fill layer I would say add black mask, and I would say overlay, and then I'll change the color of this to maybe a darker gray, and I want to adjust the roughness because this is going to be quite wet. You'll see if I paint on here, uh, there's a lot of glossiness to this, so adjusting uh, the actual roughness of this material is going to determine what that looks like as well and then um, you'll see that if I actually bring this all the way down to black that's like blending together and like all that stitching is creating a completely new material now uh, but that's not what I'm going for so I would actually decrease uh, this overlay slider here and just control it like that and then again look, I can just paint over this material and make it darker 
So we can even change the color of this material and combine it together with other ones. And there's just a whole lot of flexibility that you have with these materials in Substance Painter. Okay, so that's just a very, very quick tutorial showing you how I would uh, change color of material on top of an already existing material. And now we'll get to the proper video of Substance Painter. This is where the true magic lies, okay? So this material over here, this jacket, by the way, I created with Marvelous Designer. It was actually this jacket over here that I published on ArtStation, uh, which was a leather jacket, but I'm just testing my materials with this. And I was trying to go for denim over here, a blue denim. Now, this material is not available over here, right? I mean, it is, but with all of these colors that you see over here, it's not in the pack, right? So this is what I, this is what I mean about Substance Painter being like, it's a unlocking a golden chest of opportunity because you get to do some really cool stuff in here. So uh, this denim jacket, if I go to my layers over here, you'll see that, uh, oh, by the way, if you've loaded in all the materials and you go to materials, you'll see everything is nice and organized. That'll be, all be labeled as TD fabric. So if you're looking for that um, a preview of that uh, material, obviously you'll just go to the folder, see what that material looks like, and, you, and then obviously just drag it and use it in Substance Painter. So I'm using a TD Fabric 11, which is Jean Dark. So it's this material. So I use that as a base. So let me hide everything else. So I dragged in TD Fabric 11 as a base. So this is what it looks like, standard. And then of course we can also adjust this UV scale. So if that's something you're going for, and remember it's tileable, so it will work. Doesn't matter what your UV scale is going to be. So actually let's adjust the UV scale. Let's put it on 15 just to show you guys. And then from there I added a full layer with overlay. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting this color on top of, of the original materials color. Right, so a overlay and I just reduced the opacity there a little bit. I added some roughness and that's another thing. We can start adjusting the materials properties in here as well. So if I wanted something super shiny, I can do that as well with this material. So we can push it further. So I just left it on rough and then I added a, uh, a black mask. So I added another full layer that was white and then I added a black mask and then I literally just took a soft brush. So I'd go to brush, go to default soft, and I would paint in uh, this imperfection on top of the jacket. All right, I want to make sure. So I'd, I'd paint in or remove certain areas on top of this jacket using this mask. And then I added another full layer and this time I used a smart mask, one of the smart mask materials, and I'm not 100% sure which one I use. It could be, I think it's maybe Fabric Edge. No one 100% sure. Uh, and that was a darker blue. So if I enable that. And go back to my mask. And it would just add some darker spot in certain area or reveal some of the lighter material that's underneath. So I would use that. And uh, I can obviously adjust the global balance over here, how much I want to be visible on the jacket. And just applying all of these, these layers. And then I had another fabric material on top with another one of these uh, smart masks applied. And let me just go back here, reduce the global balance. And you can see that by combining all of these different materials together, uh, you can push the materials further using smart mask. Now, of course, this, is, this isn't a substance painter material. I'm just showing you quickly, quick breakdown of how I actually combined some of these materials together uh, to get uh, certain results. So I'm actually going to undo that. Go back to how I had it originally and enable, enable, enable. And that's basically how I was trying to build uh, this denim jacket uh, that you guys see over here. So just showing you the power of Substance Painter, how you can push these materials further. And of course, if you want to, 
we can start combining these together so let's say I want to go for fabric 13 drag that to the top let that load in and now you can see the denim normal map the denim normal is actually poking through uh, this material so if I disabled a uh, fabric 11 I'd be able to see the original fabric 13 material so it kind of looks like a almost like a wet leather uh, but now you can combine these together which I think is really really cool so if I add a black mask and if you've got UV selection let me just turn this back on if you've got UV selection enabled you'd go to polygon full and select UV and now I'm gonna just select the sleeves like that go back over here and now you see I can have selective I can choose where I want this to be uh, placed or I can combine these together have them on top of each other so there really is a lot of stuff that you can do and obviously this garment was created with the UVs for different sections like the back and the front and the sleeves so this <laughs> this isn't a tutorial on that guys uh, but just showing you uh, what you can do uh, in Substance Painter you can quickly texture your garments uh, with these fabric materials they look pretty nice and this is still at 2k so if I went all the way up to 4k let's put that at 4k quickly and another thing to keep in mind if you really want to see these materials properly I recommend uh, viewing the materials in IRA before you actually decide to export them so let me just put this at 4k and there we go now we can see a lot of that microsurface detail it's a lot more visible now so if I went back into IRA and just let it render we've got all of this uh, micro surface detail on there and again you can see that this material is blending with the gene texture now maybe that's something you want uh, but it's completely up to you as you can see I disabled it or enabled it in the layers so yeah you can push these a lot further with Substance Painter guys and yeah I think these materials are really going to come in handy because I was looking for something that added a lot of uh, just surface breakup and micro detail like that onto my garment so uh, I think these are really going to come in handy for me and I hope they come in handy for you as well so yeah that's about it I've covered the package showed you what's included showed you how I use them in Cinema 4D and Substance Painter which wasn't really a tutorial at all it was just a very, very quick breakdown of how I did the denim and showing you that you can even change the color of the materials or combine them together so uh, there's a lot of opportunity and uh, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with these materials it's not just 24 materials uh, you can create new materials using existing ones in substance painter right anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this package and have fun with it feel free to send me your results i'd love to see what you guys end up creating and uh, yeah have fun with the package and stay tuned for some more tutorials and re resources from me and thank you for the support and goodbye